Hi, uh, Bobby. Uh, you know what? I have a strange problem. I am very low on charge on my mobile and I actually need to travel now. How are you going? In your car? Yeah, I'm going by my car. You can charge in your car, no? Yeah, but uh, I don't have that power charging cable, but I have a USB cable. So, maybe I'll just plug it into the ent infotainment uh, port on my USB, uh, you know, on the music system, right? That, that should work. One. That one. I doubt. Good luck. But why do you say that? Uh, you know, now that you have told me, I think I should run an experiment to verify this. Okay, so I'm going to run the following experiment, mm. and of course now I'm going to study the charger. Okay, I am going to do four things. I'm going to charge my mobile. Uh, from four, from different, four sources. different sources, yes, okay. the wall, the wall charger, okay, my laptop's USB charger, okay, uh, the power USB uh, car? port of my car, power USB of the car. And finally, I am going to verify my infotainment port as well, the one that you claim will not work. Let us try. So, uh, this is the experiment that I am going to, uh, you know, conduct. So, uh, but how do we go about this? Because I want to essentially see how fast it is charging. So, what can I do? Maybe you can charge for some percentage. Okay. So, uh, you know, maybe 10 percent might be a long time. So, yeah. let me just try to charge it by increment of 1 percent, okay. From each source. Yes. Increment one of 1 percent. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, does this have to start at the same point? Maybe we can assume the battery is somewhat uh, yeah, so I think it won't matter if I start from 40 and see how long it takes to go to 41 percent or I start at 50 to 51 percent, likewise 60 to 61 percent, yeah. right. So I think it is okay to start at different points. The increment should be exactly 1 percent, right. Yeah, yeah. But I think there is one more problem, right. Let us say that the, the, the mobile indicates that the charge is 40 percent. Mm -hmm. How do you know if it is close to 39 or 41? Difficult. Difficult, right. So, what I am going to do is each of these experiments, I am going to wait from its base charge, okay, base percentage, I will wait for it to increment by 1, okay, base percent plus 1, and that is when I will start my clock, okay, okay, and then this goes to base percent plus 2, mm. right. For example, in the wall charger, I may start from 45 percent, I will wait for it to go to 46 percent and that is when I start the clock, right. Here I start the clock, okay. And then I will wait for it to go to 47 percent. Okay. So, this, uh, this way I am sure at least to a resolution of maybe milliseconds or so, I am able to measure it to reasonable accuracy, right. So, let us get the experiment going.
okay the beep there and we have got our results back so what we have is the wall charger was able to charge my mobile okay remember it's the same mobile same battery nothing else is changing when i go from one charger to the other okay it took about let's not worry about the second decimal for uh, 20 seconds not 40 it took 20 seconds to charge likewise the usb on the laptop also took 20 seconds to charge my power usb from the car took 40 seconds to charge okay and you are right the damn infotainment system did not charge <laughs> you know it just remained the same i started at some percentage it went up it came down it went up and it came down and it just wasn't able to very charge very small change very yeah. small changes so so i mean so this is useless i cannot even use this as a charger right it is useless for charge as a charge yeah so but but why is this can we understand this charger a little better now yeah basically that guy is unable to deliver sufficient current oh so you are saying it's all about the current Good okay thing. so you have a charger here i see yeah right of yeah. course it's difficult to uh, you know measure a, a mobile charger without ripping apart the cables so therefore we are dealing with a standard charger otherwise right so what is this charger here it's a say it's a 12 volt okay right so let's 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 look at that and uh, it says how much 2000 milliampere okay so i have a charger here okay so this charger you're saying is a 12 volt and 2000 milliampere 2000 milliampere's of charge of current Correct. okay so that's the specification of this charger but in question how are you sure it is 12 volt we will always measure and ensure okay so i have connected to voltmeter okay so you place one on the of course you have to make a contact properly now correct 12.61 okay measured voltage So the measured voltage, can you place it again, is about 12.6. The other digit is. Doesn't changing. matter, right? So let's not. So, uh, right. So we have a measured voltage of 12.6 volt, right? But uh, the funny thing is that it doesn't matter, you know, where I plugged in this charger, right? In the case of a mobile, I am sure I would have got about. 3.6 volt in all the cases. Yeah, voltages will be right? same. Right, yeah. I will get 3.6 volts in all cases, right? But why is it that this infotainment USB port alone was unable to charge my mobile? Because it's unable to give that much current. Here okay. it says 2000 milliampere. Right, so what yeah. you are saying is that for this charger to be effective, what matters is actually the current rating and not just the voltage yeah. rating. Okay, that's a very uh, interesting part that you that you mentioned now, right? So, uh, okay, so you know, last time we looked at a battery, right? If you look at, and the battery, if you remember, had a rating of. 1510 1510 milliampere hour milliampere hour right whereas the uh, charger right the charger has a rating of 2000 milliamps right alternately if you remember there was another unit it was called watt hour yeah and this guy you know these these chargers will also have a rating in terms of watt right so if you just multiply the voltage with the current you will get a wattage yeah. right so so why this fundamental difference between the 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 specification in a battery and a charger charger is to 
charge the battery, it, it gives the current. Right. But uh, what are you worried about, right? When you when you plug in your mobile into a into a socket, right? What are you actually worried about? How fast I can charge. Right. How fast you can charge and how many mobiles you can charge in one hour actually, right? So that is why you will see that the spec of a charger always focuses on rate of, right? And the rate of charging is you take the unit of the battery, right? 1510 milliamp hour, right? Or maybe I will just ignore the number, I will just focus on the dimensions and I remove time because the rate is always with respect to time. You cancel this out and you get a dimension which is that of amperes, right? Likewise, if you take the watt hour rating of the battery and divide by time, you will get a rating of a battery which is in watts, right? So, uh, the, the mobile of course, you know, had a different constraint, right? In the sense that uh, the mobile was trying to work off a battery and therefore, you had finite energy, yeah. right? And when you have finite energy, you can measure energy in terms of joules or you could also measure it in terms of charge, right? So, if you look at this dimensionally, milliamp hour is current into time, yeah. right? And watt hour is actually simply, uh, if you look at uh, watt into hour, which is power, power into, into time. time, right? This is actually power into time. You will get joules here. You will get charge, right? Or you will get energy here, right? So the battery can give finite amount of charge or finite amount of energy. And therefore, you had to measure the efficiency of a battery in terms of how much energy it could deliver, right? How fast it can deliver is not the concern, yeah. right? And uh, whereas for a battery or for a charger, what really matters is how fast you are able to deliver that energy. So, the rate of change of energy is nothing but watts. So, if you look at this, watts is nothing but rate of change of energy, right? And that is why you see these, uh, you know, if you, if you look at your fancy chargers today, you, you look at this Nero Edge 3 ampere mobile, 25 watt, right? So, they boast about the fact that this charger is able to deliver 3 amperes of current, right? And of course, if you deliver 3 amperes of current, it is going to charge at an insanely fast rate, yeah. right? And uh, unlike the infotainment <laughs> port there. So, I mean, uh, so what is the, you know, maybe can we just look at the specification of, you know, these chargers, by the way. For example, I, I charge my mobile from my laptop of a USB 3.0 port, right? And It is about uh, 900 milliamps, right? So, if you look at, if you look at this guy here, uh, if you just go back to that, uh, right? The current of this USB seems to be about 900 milliamps, okay? Because it is a USB 3.0 port, by the way. This is not true if it is a USB 1.0 or a USB yeah. 2.0, right? Yeah. Let us look at, for example, a USB 1.0 delivers up to 500 milliamp. Now, it does not mean that yeah. the infotainment port in the car delivered 500 milliamp. It is actually much lesser than yeah. that, right? It cannot, it, you cannot go by this, this number because it says up to 500 milliamps, right? So, this was much, much less than 
500 milliamps of current and that is the reason it was not able to charge the uh, uh, thing right and of course the uh, power in the USB car I think that can again vary because just like the infotainment port the current rating can be up to a certain number but you have to look at the exact specification of that particular port in that particular car to understand if it is useful for charging your mobile or not right. So, uh, one interesting thing that we did here right is uh, the fact that we uh, you know we, we just we just conducted a very loose experiment actually we did not yeah. worry about lot of details right. But this is something that is very useful to an engineer. So, in the next lecture we will just try to drive home some of these concepts uh, in terms of how you can formalize such loose experiments and still gain some useful insight out of it. Thank you.